to this is my Mellers Chameleon in his habitat. Uh, you know, this isn't really ideal for a Mellers because they need a very large space. I mean, this is pretty big already, but um, eventually I'm gonna get him a very, very large uh, Repti Breeze. This is, this is one of the larger Repti Breezes, but there's one that's a lot bigger than this that you know he might enjoy a lot more. Uh, what I'm going to go over today is uh, Chameleon Basics, care, feeding, uh, moisture, water levels, humidity, lighting, and aesthetics. Uh, so, uh, again, chameleons, they aren't really for uh, beginner reptile owners, you know, these guys need a lot of care and uh, they, need, they have a lot of specific requirements that if they, if they don't have, will, they, they'll definitely die. Uh, so, let, feeding, what I feed this guy is, um, you know, I give him a mixed diet, I give him a bunch of crickets sometimes. Uh, what I usually do is I take about 20 crickets, I put them in this, this Tupperware box right here, it's full of Repsi Calcium, shake it up and put them in there. Uh, another thing I like to feed this guy since he's so big is Dubia Roaches, I don't really know how to pronounce that, but those guys are an insanely good um, uh, protein based food for these guys. Uh, really with Dubia Roaches you're not really going to want to feed them to your smaller chameleons, you know your your Veals and your um, Charming Chameleons. As you can see this guy is pretty big, you know he's bigger than my hand actually, he might be bigger than my head. but. Um, yeah, this guy is very specific diet. Uh, there are a bunch of, you know, uh, false, like the phoenix worms. They claim to be uh, very calcium rich, which they are. But um, you're not really going to get much calcium if, you know, it doesn't digest. Like, I, I, I highly recommend not feeding them phoenix worms because uh, phoenix worms don't really digest in any reptile's body, really. Um, uh, again, with feeding... You're going to want to be careful because a lot of the, the foods that chameleons can eat can have sharp bodies like crickets and mealworms. Um, and actually, when they draw back in, when they draw their tongue back in, it could actually cut their lip. And that can be uh, fatal sometimes to chameleons because they're, they're very prone to infection. Uh, next thing I'm going to go over is moisture, humidity, and water levels. And build this. Uh, actually, what I did was I went out to Home Depot and I bought this, this type of pipe lining. You know, it's super flexible and clear. And I ran it through the top of my humidifier, and I ran that straight into his cage. And now with that, you know, they're very, uh, these, these humidifiers are very, very powerful. And you're going to make sure you want to get the right one. Uh, see, what I got here is a Walgreens Cool Mist. Uh, really, with, with humidifiers, you're looking for cool mist, because hot mist can actually, I've heard horror stories of hot mist actually cooking people's chameleons alive. So you're going to want to be really careful with that. You know, a lot of people don't really know about the difference between cool mist and hot mist. Which, you know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, hot mist is at, it's obviously going to be fucking hot. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what I've got here, this actually set me back about 40 bucks. It's completely worth it. You know, there are a lot of those Repti Foggers out there in the market. They're about $80, $90. They can be pretty expensive. And they can break down a lot. Actually, when we had this guy on uh, at the pet store, you know, where I worked, is we had him on one of those Repti Foggers. It was about, it was like an $80 Repti Fogger and it kept breaking down and even before that they had crazy, we've had problems with it. You know, chameleons have died because it stopped working. Uh, eventually what I'm going to do is I want to buy another one of these and um, run a bunch of pipes to the chameleons, um, exoterras. Uh, anyway, yeah, these guys they need a crazy amount of humidity. This guy does anyway. Most chameleons do need a fair amount of humidity, <clears throat> of, excuse me, of humidity though. Uh, you know, they're very, they're very, um, they drink a lot, they need a lot of water, and the humidity actually helps them stay hydrated. Uh, what I've got up here, actually, I've got a makeshift dripper system out of this water bottle and this, this little blue, um, I can't, it's called an air valve or something. You can actually pick them up at pet stores, you know, where they sell aquariums. Uh, and what that does is it provides a constant dripping of moving water for this guy to drink out of, because they don't drink from stationary water. Uh, water bowls, they aren't really recommended. You can get a bowl and fill it with, like, some moss. Uh, it's a specific type of moss. It, it, escapes, uh, it escapes me right now. But you can fill it up, and you can fill it with water, and what that does is it actually keeps the humidity levels um, pretty high. Uh, but, you know, other than that, you're going to need a humidifier for one of the, the bigger species, you know, panthers and mellers and um, all those guys. Uh, yeah, this this guy, uh, he's actually showing his stress marks right now because he doesn't really like the camera. But um, I get, I've actually got this as well. What this is, is it's a sprayer. It's a multi-purpose sprayer. Um, I've got a full RO water. This is actually full RO water as well. You know, you're going to really need that very clean water. 
Um, it's got, you know, interchangeable nozzles and everything. It's really good for keeping him hydrated, keeping the cage sprayed. I actually spray this about four or five times a day. You know, when I, especially when I get home when I'm off work because he really needs this uh, humidity to stay alive. And uh, that's, that's, again, that's why I steer, I usually steer uh, younger customers away from chameleons because uh, they're very specific in their requirements. Uh, what I'm going to go into now actually is their heating and the cleanliness. Cleanliness is a very big deal with these guys. Let's but anyway, that. these Repti Breezes, they've got these little um, latches down here. You can actually lift up. And uh, what I use this for actually is I, I take his Repti carpet out about twice a week and I wash it just to make sure no fungal or bacteria are growing on this. Uh, you're going to want to stay really clean with these guys. These guys, um, even their their own feces can keep them from eating. You know, they're very clean, very stressed out animals. Uh, another thing is I take these plants out and everything, all these logs, and I spray them down about once a week just to make sure he's clean. Uh, another thing with this is uh, cleanliness can actually... <clears throat> not cleanliness, but uh, the, the, the enclosure being dirty can actually lead to them dying. You know, it's pretty obvious, but not a lot of people know that. A lot of people just like to keep these guys in there with their, you know, feces and everything. Um, another thing, uh, substrates, I don't really recommend them. I mean, yeah, sure, they do hold a lot of humidity, but Repti carpet is just so easy to clean. And um, substrates can actually cause impacts where a chameleon would strike down at the ground. Let's say a cricket was down here and there was a bunch of coconut fibers or aspen or whatever. Uh, uh, he would shoot down and he would take some of that fiber or like aspen, take it back up into his stomach and it can actually, in, it can actually you know, pierce through his organs. And so that's not really a good thing when it comes to these guys. It can actually cause uh, anal prolapses, which really is, it's, it's probably the worst thing to happen to these guys. Um, aesthetics, let's go into this. Uh, what I've got here is a bunch of fake plants. You know, chameleons, I really recommend um, using live plants. There's a, I, I can put a link in the description of a bunch of live plants that are really safe for these guys. Uh, there are a bunch of plants that could actually cause them harm and maybe even death. Uh, but for right now, I'm sticking to, to fake plants because I don't really have the money for live plants right now. I actually haven't been paid yet. I get paid bi-weekly, so, you know, I've only been working for a couple of weeks. It should be coming soon. But anyway, once I do that, I want to fill this guy up with a bunch of live plants, uh, you know, some pothos and all that stuff, and um, I'll give you guys an update. But anyway, well, chameleons, you know, they like to be hidden. There are different types of chameleons. You know, you've got the pygmies, you've got veals, and you've got these big hosses over here. Uh, these guys, what they need is a bunch of foliage because, you know, the bigger chameleons like panther and uh, meller, um, what they, they need this actually, uh, yeah, as you can see, you know, he's trying to blend in with these plants up here. He's doing a really good job of it too. But, uh, w with chameleons, they're very stressed reptiles. You know, they like to be hidden a lot. That's their main goal to be hidden. So I wouldn't really recommend handling them. I mean, you can, but it would just stress them out a lot. But yeah, the aesthetics, uh, dealing with this, you know, I've got this guy set up in like a jungle like environment. Uh, the, that, that fogger actually really helps with that, but you know, that's more for his humidity. But um, anyway, they really they really need a bunch of foliage to stay um, to stay hidden. That's what their main goal is to stay hidden. I can't stress that enough. A lot of people think that you know just throwing a bunch of sticks in there would keep them you know happy, but no, these guys actually need a lot of foliage. Um, what I'm going to be working on is I'm actually going to be working on a vivarium. I'm going to fill this up with you know some um, some hydro balls. Put them put them under there. You know, cut a bunch of holes in here. Get some pothos and some other really good plants in here. But anyway, yeah, these guys really need to stay hidden. I mean, I've said that like four times, but that's that's the main deal with these guys. Uh, actually, he's showing signs of stress with all those black dots. You know, he's actually really calm, green, yellow, like those plants up there. But uh, right now, he doesn't really like the camera too much. Uh, he's not used to it yet. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what I'm going to get into now is temperature and lighting. Um, what I've got here is a, I think it's a Repti Sun or a Sun Glow or something like that. This is UVA. It's mostly for heating. It's mostly for keeping the cage, you know, at that at that 90 degree, 80 degree, 85 degree temperature, uh, which actually the Mellers, you know, they're more used to 90s, around the 90s, uh, 80s, 85s. Um, it, it really differs with chameleons. I've had veals before, and, you know, I know th those guys, they like, a, they like a lot of fluctuating heat. Uh, what I've got up here is a 5.0 UVV bulb. Actually, I'm going to need to switch that to a 10 because uh, 5.0 isn't really big enough for this. 
Uh, I, it might be, but I mean, I, I'd, I'd rather be on the safe side when I get a bigger enclosure. But uh, yeah, UVB is really necessary for reptiles. You know, they really need it to um, process calcium. And uh, a lot of chameleons I see end up with calcium deficiencies, you know, bumps, you know, little, met their, their tails will be messed up. Or, you know, one of their arms would be a little funky. But uh, this guy, he's doing pretty good. I mean, I've got the UVB and I calcium dust all his food, so he should be fine. Uh, but yeah, what you really want to go for is you're going to want a heat lamp and a UVB. Don't just get a heat lamp. I mean, I've seen people with just UVA bulbs and they complain because the chameleons always die. But uh, yeah, go with UVB. You're going to need UVB. I can't stress that enough. Um, with snakes, actually, you know, leading off, going off, off topic into snakes, uh, there's, there's this crazy misconception that they need UVB. They absolutely need it. Snakes do not need UVB. Do not let anybody convince you that they need UVB. They just don't. All right, ball pythons especially. Those guys do not need UVB at all. It actually stresses them out and can cause them harm. Uh, usually what I've, what I've got for those guys is I've got UVA. But yeah, you, you know, really a lot of people, a lot of breeders keep them in tubs and all that stuff. So uh, it's, it's clearly seen that they don't really need UVB or any uh, standard uh, heating well, not heating, but uh, sun source. Uh, okay, that, that pretty much wraps everything up for this guy. You know, I went over the enclosure. I went over the cleanliness. I went over the, the feeding. I went over his aesthetics and what I've got going on in here. Uh, lighting and humidity. Again, uh, this this uh, Repti Breeze, it set me back. Sorry, there's a plane passing overhead. Uh, it set me back about $120. Uh, it's really necessary for chameleons to have screen cages, or screen, um, screen habitats, rather. Another thing with this guy is, uh, this over here, again, it only sent me back about $40. Please do not go out and buy Reptifoggers, you know those things. Actually, some of them are hot mist, and that's not really good for them at all. Uh, this thing, it's about a gallon and a third. It'll last me a couple of days. You know, those little reptifoggers, they're about the size of water bottles. Uh, you're going to have to refill that every other day, or in fact, every day. Uh, again, when you're looking for a humidifier, look for cool mist. Um, look for something with one access point rather than a bunch of vents. Some necessary cut. Um, my phone actually cut me off because I ran out of storage. But anyway, the tubing, I picked it up at Home Depot. It had to be about $6. Uh, it was pretty long. I mean, as you can see, I cut this huge section off just to fit my giant um, repti breeze. But yeah, you're gonna really need this if you're gonna go with this. You can also use PVC, but I know that you gotta go with through you know glues and all that crazy stuff. So I just picked that as an easier alternative. And I see that it leaks. I mean, obviously it's not it's not uh, completely perfect, but I mean, look at that. Like it puts out so much um, fog, which is uh, really incredible uh, compared to those little uh, dinky repti breezes. I mean, uh, repti foggers. But yeah. Um, Remember, 120 about 40 bucks, $6. This set me back about 10 You don't really need this. You can use a, uh, you know, one of those sprayers. But um, I actually like this. It's fairly handy. I use it for other things. Uh, you know, lighting, you're going to need UVB. Don't ever forget that. UVB is uh, completely necessary. And, uh, yeah, just remember, chameleons need an open, open screen um, enclosure. Now, uh, thanks for watching, guys. You know, I'm actually in my reptile room right now that I'm going to get set up. I'm going to get a savanna monitor, maybe an adult ball python in there. Uh, this is going to be a 20-gallon long with a Cali king snake. Uh, I'll give you guys an update <clears throat> when that happens. You know, I actually just started out with this reptile room. I've never been in this room before. It's this little, uh, this little uh, semi-house that's, you know, next to mine. But, um, yeah, I'll give you guys an update on his enclosure when I get the live plants and my room as well. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please comment, you know, direct message me if YouTube even still has that. I haven't been on in a long time. Um, yeah, and just remember, at night, you're going to want to keep this low for the bigger guys, especially this guy. You know, they're used, actually for every chameleon, because they're used to temperature and humidity drops at night. So you're going to want to keep that very, very low. You're going to want to turn all his heat lights off and, you know, turn it back on. It has to be a 12-12 schedule or, you know, his sleeping patterns might go out of whack. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. You know, comment. Uh, any questions, just let me know. <clears throat> any concerns or anything you think I could do to better this other than what I'm already going to do, what I explained in this video, please let me know. 
All right, thanks, guys.